I'm in a hat designed to last 31 days. So I gotta make water and grow food on a planet where nothing grows. But if I can't figure out a way to make contact with NASA, then none of this matters anyway. We've got an incoming message. My God. <laughs> Mark Watney is still alive. Woo! In your face, Neil Armstrong. Okay. This week's big Mars news may not be on the level of Matt Damon growing food in space levels, but some major new findings from NASA tell us that simple forms of life may have existed on the red planet about 3.8 billion years ago. NASA's Perseverance rover just dug out rocks that show signs that the planet had water in the past and organic molecules that are a key ingredient for life. The rover has been exploring Mars for almost two years now, and eventually its samples will be returned back here on Earth. NASA and the European Space Agency plan to send another vehicle to Mars to launch those samples into orbit, and then a spacecraft would carry them back to Earth. All of this focus on Mars is tied to the relatively young field of astrobiology, which focuses on the search for life in space and potentially habitable worlds beyond Earth. Here to answer all of our burning questions, Tarek Malik, the editor-in-chief of Space.com. I know he's the perfect guest because he has been to space camp five times. <laughs> Tarek, all kidding aside, I know that you're going to be able to help us understand why these rock samples that the Perseverance rover dug up are so important and what it means for us Earthlings. Well, Katie, this is really exciting because the Perseverance rover that NASA built, it's the most advanced, most capable uh, car-sized rover uh, we've ever sent uh, to the Red Planet. And that, that question has always been there. You know, is there life on Mars now? Was there ever life there in the past? And what can that tell us about how special Earth is where we see life everywhere? And what this, these discoveries are three separate studies uh, that, uh, that came out kind of at the same time is that uh, they, they've confirmed that this place, this Jezero crater, where Perseverance has been rolling around, uh, was a wash in water on Earth. Everywhere there's water, there's life. Uh, they found hints of the building blocks of life, these organic molecules that are locked in the rocks that the, the rover is fighting. And, and this is probably the most exciting part, it's collected those samples and stored them away so that uh, eventually we'll get them back to Earth and scientists can crack them open and hopefully answer that, that question once and for all, was there life on Mars a lock in them? So there's another big space headline just about 24 hours ago, NASA's Orion spacecraft, which is part of the Artemis program, set a new record for the farthest distance from Earth traveled by a spacecraft designed to carry humans to deep space and to safely return to Earth. Is this, Tarek, a sign of bigger things to come for the Artemis program? I think what this shows is that NASA's big test flight of the Orion spacecraft, that's their new moonship to take astronauts to the Mars, hopefully as soon as 20, uh, or pardon me, astronauts to the moon, as soon as 2024, landing on the moon in 2025 uh, on a separate lander, that it seems like they're, they're checking all of their boxes. They're setting new records now, the, the farthest distance of a crew-capable uh, spacecraft from Earth. In fact, it's going to get even farther uh, uh, until this, uh, as, as it goes further in its really long sweeping orbit. Uh, there's still a lot of, uh, of milestones to go. They have to get this spacecraft back. Uh, it's, got, it's got the biggest heat shield ever. It's gonna be coming in uh, much uh, much more harshly than the, uh, the Apollo uh, capsule. So, uh, so there's still some road to go, but so far everything seems to be going well. And the big question is when can they carry astronauts? I got less than a minute left, but I do have to ask, because as we speak, during this hour, SpaceX's Dragon Craft is docking with the International Space Station to deliver supplies like tomato seeds. What can you tell us about why that's happening right now? Well, uh, very busy in space, but this is just part of what life in space is like. Astronauts on the International Space Station need supplies. Uh, SpaceX is one of uh, two companies that flies those cargoes uh, those cargo missions for NASA. Uh, it arrived with over three and a half tons of supplies, uh, some tomato seeds that astronauts can use to uh, to grow, as well as to, to uh, test the, their exposure to uh, to the space environment. It also has new solar arrays for the space station, spacesuit gear for for spacewalks, and food. And sometimes there's some ice cream in its freezer, and uh, the astronauts really do enjoy that. But it's just something that they need, just like a regular shopping run for us on Earth. 
Tarek Malik, Editor-in-Chief of Space.com. Always grateful when you're able to share your analysis and your insight with our viewers. Thank you for being here this morning. A pleasure, Kate. Thank you.